How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. So as you can see from the title, I do think I do have an issue with the car and sadly I'm not exactly sure on what it is. There is a few things that are wrong with it and I'll go ahead and dive into a lot more of what I think it could be. So I will go ahead and start off with one of the first issues I was having which was a few weeks ago whenever I filmed the launch of my Mustang on the street for the first time. And right after I did that, I actually did notice there was like a weird sound coming from like a clutch. I think it was around that area, like clutch transmission or something, which I will put up on the screen here in a second. It was kind of just like a rattling. I think it was honestly just cause I was beating on the clutch a lot. It was just honestly a really weird sound, but I will throw it up right now. Now I'm not exactly sure what that could possibly be. I have like double checked like a lot of the bolts and like some stuff that's under there. So I know it's not anything that's been loose. And I've also checked like a trans mount just in case cause I didn't know if like the transmission was just kind of moving a little bit or something. Now another theory, which I don't think this has anything to do with the noise, but I think the engine mounts could possibly be going out. I'm not exactly sure, but I wanted to kind of come on here and see if you guys have ever experienced anything like this. It's kind of weird because it's a new clutch that doesn't have any miles on it and it's actually a really good clutch. It's like ready for 550 horsepower, but I obviously don't make nothing around that. But that was the first time I did launch that clutch. I mean, I still drive the car really hard. So it's not like that was the first time a clutch has ever been beaten on. And I mean, the thing's been adjusted and everything. Like it's well, well over break-in period. If you guys did, ever experience anything like that just let me know because if not i mean i'm just going to take it to the guy that like does some stuff in my car and i figured i would let him kind of just double check over everything not that it's that big of an issue because it's only happened to me about three times but it's only if i beat on the car and that's whenever i notice whenever the clutch is like very very hot which i didn't know if it could be because it's expanding a little bit and something that's what made me think it was like a bolt but i don't know it sounds pretty pretty aggressive and i do need to get that all fixed before I do take this thing to Mustang week this year, which I know I still got plenty of time until then, but I definitely don't want to be pushing everything off and trying to scramble getting stuff fixed before I leave. Something else that's also happened that really doesn't make any sense is if I can go pop my hood, I will show you. So the other day I did have a vacuum line pop off and I'm not exactly sure why or how it happened. So obviously if you come under here, I mean everything's back together now, but this line, which it honestly even looks like it's kind of moved since, but this line right here that goes into the idle air control valve had popped off. And what is weird is I thought the car was just running really lean or something weird. And also I could tell that I was just getting like too much air or too much of something. And I never really did check that line. The car had literally stalled on me. And I've noticed like in between shifting, it was just really dropping the RPMs really low. Which I mean, obviously it was getting way too much air. So that's obviously why I was doing it. But I didn't check the hood because I wasn't that far from my house. So I figured I would just go ahead and just drive home. And then once I got here, obviously it died again on me in the driveway. And I just couldn't really figure it out. But then also when I arrived in the hood, I noticed that there's a line was off and I put it back on and it's been fine since. But that happened after me beating on the car too, which it doesn't make any sense because I beat on the car for so long and there's never really been anything that's like popped off like that, which is kind of weird. I do know that this line, it is kind of a little bit too small or something. You can see how I have it. I mean, it's kind of bent just to be able to fit this JLT cold air intake. I was thinking either it was getting way too much air or just something was going wrong. And I was automatically thinking it could have been an idle air control valve, but that's brand new. So I didn't really think it was a, a fuel filter, which that's brand new. So then it led me to believe that it could be some of my mass airflow sensor. Obviously whenever I checked, I could see the line was off. And then yesterday whenever I was gonna go put gas in this thing, and then I actually did make like a real for Instagram, by the way, if you're not following me on there, follow me right here, it's on the screen. I do post a lot of stuff on there and I've been posting a lot more. Same thing with my TikTok, all my social medias are the same, but I was going to go do that and I put gas in the car 
Then I drove up the road, and earlier that day, I was noticing that the front end felt a lot more loose, like as if it just like wasn't as stiff as it normally is. And then whenever I was backing into a parking spot, I did notice, just cause it was so quiet, and like I wasn't really like raving up the exhaust, like you know a lot of people do whenever they're backing up. I mean, I'm guilty, but I was hearing like some clunking, and I remember that I seen a video of somebody that had a bad shock that it was sitting there clunking on them. So I figured I definitely need shocks and I'm gonna go and destroy this too, which is crazy because I've never replaced these in this car. I mean, they're still the stock ones and this car is like 20 some years old now, but it doesn't have that many miles, but it's still something that needs to be done. So whether that's the issue or not, I mean, those are still gonna get replaced just because they need to be done. And it was something that if I was taking this thing to Mustang Week next year, those definitely need to be replaced because I'm so tired of how rough this thing rides and driving four hours in this car just isn't that fun. So I figured I would dive into a lot of suspension stuff this year because I mean, as many of you know, I, I was kind of talking about selling this thing and then doing like a S550 build or an S187 build. But then again, I mean, everybody's telling me not to sell this. I know I would regret it. I mean, it's a really clean car that's honestly really hard to find nowadays. And I mean, obviously I take care of it, except for whatever's been going on right now. I really don't know the issue. <laughs> I don't know, I figured my ultimate goal is to be able to coyote swap this thing. I think that would be sick. I mean, that's what my original plan was ever since. I've kind of really dug deep into this build, but I figured why not just go ahead and do that? No, I'm not doing it anytime soon. So <laughs> don't think you're getting a coyote swap like tomorrow or anything. But I figured I do need to do a lot of suspension stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then shocks and struts obviously, and then maybe I'll convert it to coilers eventually. But I know that, and I'm gonna do some like anti-roll bars probably, need to replace all the control arms. I just want this thing to be good, and then obviously I wanna do brakes eventually. Like, I mean, these are still stock brakes. Obviously I did, I did new pads recently, which I mean, it's just like your ordinary like ceramic race pads. But I did that, and I would love to go to, I think there's like a 2001 Cobra R, kit, kind of like a knockoff version, but it may still Brembo, but I would love to do those in the front, and then also I'd have to do something to compensate for it in the rear, which would probably be like Power Stop, Z28, or whatever it's called. I could do those rear brakes and those front brakes, I think that would look really good. It's more so for the looks, because, I mean, I don't really need that much stopping power. If I eventually have a Coyote in this car, obviously I would, it would be really nice. There's a lot of stuff though that goes into a Coyote Swap, which a lot of it is time and a lot of money. And obviously it's a lot of stuff behind it. I know you can do it kind of a cheap way, but I want it done right. So obviously it's gonna take a little bit of time to do it right. So I guess just let me know if you have ever experienced anything like that. And I mean, it could be like bad motor mounts or like the transmission mount. It really could be anything because I personally don't know what it is. That's kind of why I'm on here asking. I guess what I'm saying is that to be expecting in the future is I am going to do a lot of suspension work and maybe do some brakes and then after that maybe I'll be ready to start doing a coyote swap and it's not going to happen overnight I mean there's still a lot of other stuff I got to do so I mean it's going to be a lot of stuff but who knows who knows where it will take me and I figured it'd be kind of cool the cool thing is 3650 that's in the car I think I can pair up to a coyote for the time being and that would be obviously a lot better because I don't have to buy like a T56 or anything straight off the bat. Which I mean, if I get a good deal, I could always do that. But I'm, I don't know exactly what I wanna do. I know there's some engines on like eBay right now that aren't really that much. And the reason, one of the reasons I'm so dead set on doing a swap instead of just boosting this thing is one, the two valve motor, I mean, many of you know, it doesn't really have that good of a horsepower capability. I know 400 horsepower is more than enough and it's fun enough for a little street car, especially with what these things weigh. But I feel like if I really did want to ever go to that next step, I can't really do anything without building the engine. So that, so therefore it would be a lot better just to swap something else in it. I considered like a four valve swap, but it's still the same boat pretty much. And then Terminator, I mean, those things are like, those things are gold for those drivetrains. So I mean, it's really just pointless even doing that. Maybe one day I'll figure out something and obviously my ultimate goal would be having it swapped with some form of boost on it. But who knows, who knows when that stuff will happen. It's just kind of my plans are right now. I know my mind changes a lot. I mean, literally not even a month ago, I was trying to get another car. 
but I know a lot of you guys say that I would regret this. It's funny because as soon as I started talking about like potentially selling it, I know my neighbor, which I mean, he doesn't follow anything, but my neighbor, he doesn't want to buy it. It's like second or third time he stopped me asking whenever I drive by his house. He's got a bunch of old cars. I mean, it's pretty cool. He's got like a 55 bet. He's got an old C10, like a Camaro, tons of stuff. Bel Air, he was asking if I was ready to sell it yet, but then also like everybody on Instagram, they are all saying, like whenever you're ready, I got it cash and all this. So it's just kind of funny. It really makes me like appreciate my car that much more because if there's that many people hitting you up trying to buy it, then it kind of means that you have something somewhat special. Honestly, I don't know when all this stuff would happen, but I do know in the next few weeks, you can expect me. I will be buying shocks and struts. I'll probably be replacing that. I might take it up, let my like guy do it. I don't really know, but as of right now, I'm probably gonna replace shocks and struts. And then I still wanna throw a mid pipe on this car because I've had this thing for four years and I've still always had the cats on. I don't understand that. I mean, it's not that like, it would be that much louder without cats, but I don't really know why I've still always had that. I do wanna end up tending the windshield eventually, especially if I'm gonna keep this thing. Like the more and more I drive it, I just, I don't like the winter people can look in as much. It's not that bad. It's just, this car already attracts so much attention and I feel like it just like, everybody's just staring at me. I'll probably end up doing like 50 on the windshield or something, not entirely sure. It just depends on what would be dark, but not like too dark, obviously. And also, I have these caster camera plates. Obviously, these are the stock ones, but I have these in the cabinet. So, I've had these caster camera plates for like, ever. I've never put them on the car. One of the main reasons I wasn't going to is just because of the fact that, I mean, I was gonna put coilers on this car, but I don't know how soon that's gonna happen. And if I'm gonna replace the struts up here, why not go ahead and do this, I guess. I mean, it's just a couple extra steps, but it would give me a lot more adjustment and be able to properly align my car. I don't know if I haven't ever made a video, but not too long ago, my tire had actually popped because it wasn't aligned properly, which I still got a lot of mileage out of it. It's just, I don't really want that to happen again because tires do get expensive. I know a lot of people don't worry about the fronts, but where I actually like drive my car a lot and I like to do like more spirited back road driving, I do like to have some somewhat grippy tires in the front. I guess that's pretty much all I'm gonna have for you guys today. And I guess make sure to subscribe, leave a comment down below, leave a thumbs up on this video, and I guess I'll catch you guys in the next one.